What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. My name is Meg and today we are doing a first impression review and two looks using the new Urban Decay She-Hulk eyeshadow palette. I am so excited that Urban Decay was able to collaborate with Marvel and to do the She-Hulk palette. I think that that is super cool. This packaging is absolutely sickening. So before we get into my thoughts and opinions, let's talk about the palette here for a quick minute. This is described on their website as be your own hero with this smashing assortment of 13 silky yet strong vegan eyeshadows, including supercharged shimmers, mega impact mattes, and duo chromes, plus an extra large hulked out shade for layering over any look. So this is 13 limited edition eyeshadows, high impact transformative shimmers and dual chromes, ultra blendable mattes, extra large transformer topper shade for layering, and limited edition collectible palette is the information that we're getting. And the whole idea behind this palette is that there's two sides to it, as there's often two sides to the Hulk. So... One side is supposed to be the courtroom baddie, which is this side. And then over here we have some more color, which is the smashing superhero side. So that is the information on the palette. It does retail for $45, which I feel like is an average price. Like I personally feel that all <laughs> products should be less money. Um, but that's just another conversation and another day of talking about capitalism and consumerism. So anyways, I really love the packaging on this palette. And I thought when I saw this packaging, because I didn't know much about this palette, I didn't really see it advertised. And even on their Instagram page, like they're not really posting about it. Um, so I think that's odd. My husband did surprise me with this, which is like super sweet of him. He thought, you know, he loves, he knows that I love Urban Decay. And, um, yeah, so he thought that this is something I would like. So when I saw the packaging, I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be so cool. I've been wanting, if you watched my last video, uh, a green, like a true green eyeshadow palette because I love the Smoke Sessions palette by Melt, but it's still not enough green variation. So um, I'm hoping that somebody comes out with like a green palette, like with olives and lighter greens to darker smoky greens to like forest green, emerald green. Like I need a good green eyeshadow palette. So needless to say, I was disappointed <laughs> when I opened this. Ah! When I open this up and there's no green in here, I'm like, this is a Hulk palette. Why is there not more green? Um, but anyways, instead of a mirror, we have like this really cool like hologram transformation. So I think that that's really different and unique. I like that. Again, the packaging is just so sick. I love the marbling. But the only true green shade here is the Hulk shade. So I'm like, why are we still throwing random blues in eyeshadow palettes? We have a purple here. These two are colorful, but they kind of look the same. This looks like a darker dual chrome. This looks like it might have like some green hue to it. Along with this one, Gamma Glow, it looks like it may have a little bit green, but it's not giving me quite what I was hoping. And I'm just a little disappointed with the color selection in here. Um, I can totally understand, you know, Urban Decay wanting the average consumer is not going to want to wear big bold makeup like some of us like to but you know I wish that they would go back to their roots a little bit more so this is a message to Urban Decay if you're watching this um I am going to get ready to start putting on these eyeshadows so I'm just using my ABH eye primer I remember when I did not get into makeup until like I was 20, um, I wasn't really allowed to wear makeup as a teenager and my mom doesn't wear makeup so I was never really introduced to it until I went to college actually. And I'm also from a very small town, like back in the day, like around this time there's probably like 3,000 people population in the town that I grew up in. So it was a really big deal when this outdoor mall came and it had a store called Sephora um, because I was just, 
you know, doing the drugstore makeup, which there's nothing wrong with, but it was just one of those things where I don't know if you've ever like experienced like imposter syndrome going into stores, like with higher end stores and you're like, they know I don't belong in here and like they are looking at you weird because you don't look like their average clientele. But like I just remember being so intimidating, so intimidated the first time I went into Sephora when I was about 20 and I remember Urban Decay stood out to me simply because I was looking at this store and all these brands had the same thing. They all had brown neutral eyeshadows and eyeliners and that's fine but I was immediately drawn to Urban Decay because they had bright bold color in a sea of boring neutrals so that kind of started like the first time i walked into sephora i just fell in love with urban decay i feel like you may have heard me talk about this before if you've been here for a while i feel like the last palette i bought from them was their uh, naked ultra violet palette from a couple years ago um, I do like that palette, but I do wish it was quite bolder and that's kind of been my messaging to Urban Decay is that I wish that you guys would go more back towards your roots of bold makeup and bold eyeshadow. So anyway, I actually have this whole drawer down here that's full of Urban Decay, but I walked out with my very first non-drug store eyeshadow palette and it's the Ammo palette by Urban Decay. I absolutely love this and like there was a lot of color in here and let me just say back like when I was 20 it was 2010 which was like the year of shimmer so like there's there was like no mattes and eyeshadow palettes but like there's one brown color in here and of course there's a black and like there's like the neutral shimmers but they have color and I love that about them and I'm just getting into it because like I'm here, like I'm in my drawer, I'm into it. This is like my favorite, this is their anniversary palette, the 15th anniversary palette. This is my favorite palette because of like that row of middle colors. Like where are those fun colors, Urban Decay? Like I know you can do it even in recent collabs, like you have had fun, bold colors in your palettes like even with the Game of Thrones collab, there's fun, bold colors in here. So it's like where is that for the Hulk palette? Like the Hulk palette would have been the perfect excuse for you to do like a bold green eyeshadow palette and I just feel like the mark was missed. I feel like this is like the last colorful eyeshadow palette that they truly came out with and again it's like half neutral. And I say all of this as like with love because Urban Decay got me to fall in love with eyeshadow and creativity and I'm just sad <laughs> that ever since they seem to have launched uh, their Naked collection that they haven't really done that much bold things. So I hope that Urban Decay can kind of get back to like their roots. And if you're coming out with a Hulk palette to give us like some more like bam in your face colors. So enough of that. <laughs> We're like 10 minutes in and I haven't even touched the eyeshadow. So let's get into the look. All right, so to get this look started, I wanna do something fun, different, unique, see what I can really do with the colors in this palette instead of the neutrals. And I understand that Urban Decay like has more neutrals and like maybe they're playing it safe to reach that demographic because like I said, the average person isn't walking around with like hot pink eyeshadow. I am though, um, so make something for both of us, you know what I mean? So anyways, this look is inspired by Lisa DiMaggio. I love her content, um, so I'm going to see what I can do based off of the colors that we have. So I'm just going to get into it. I'll put the name of the colors that I'm using on the screen, and then I'll probably do the voiceover of my rants <laughs> while I'm doing this eyeshadow. So let's get into it. And I also just want to say that Lisa's look is a lot more intriguing because she's using bases, like colored bases and glitter and all these different layerings with her eyeshadows to get them super vibrant. But I just want to see what this palette can do on its own. So let's get into it. This palette is mostly shimmer. And I think that shimmer applies best with your finger, not a brush. But with the structured look that I'm going for, a brush would be perfect. This is like a rounded brush. And I wanted to see how it would apply with a brush anyway. It took several layers to build it up to how I wanted it to be. These shimmers are so sheer. I'm so confused by it. The purple in this palette is driving me absolutely nuts because it gives nothing. Like, I do another eye look in this video and you'll see my struggle and how I try to work around. I try so hard to get this purple to 
work because it looks opaque and beautiful in the pan, but it gives nothing in real life. Just like the rest of the shimmers that you're going to see me work with, like what I use next on across the middle of my lid, it looked like it would be like this beautiful like golden green and it gave nothing. And I'm just so confused because eyeshadow formulation has come so far, especially over the last 10 years. I don't know why like the pigment in these in this palette is so bad. Um, this Hulk shade is okay, but this is the one I was talking about. No further questions. It gives nothing. The Hulk shade is like the most pigmented, like nicest shimmer in the entire palette. <laughs> and I do want to take a second to applaud Urban Decay for working with a female superhero character. I think it's so cool. It's just sad that the palette is so disappointing. Gamma Ray did give some pigment actually. I was getting so frustrated with this shadow and determined to make it work, so I used an eyeliner as a base. So I smudged out this purple liner. I love their liner, fantastic liner. It's just this palette. I don't know what it is. It was super flaky. It got in my eye. It made my eye water. And I'm not the only, like, I can't be the only one saying that this palette is disappointing because I just looked at the website because I wasn't happy with this and it took me a while to edit it. And I'm looking at the website and it's on sale for $20. So... It's safe to say that this shadow, that this eyeshadow palette flopped, unfortunately. Before we finish, let's jump into the second look that I did. I did create both of these looks when this palette first launched, but because I was so unhappy with the final product, it's really hard for me to sit down and edit something that I'm not proud of. So that's why it's taken me so long to get this video edited and put out and hence the palette being on sale. But my plan of action for the second look was to attack the purple with the brush because I was determined to try to make it work. The fallout on this, I can feel it dripping all over my face, which is why I always do my eyes first. I'm gonna go in with my finger here and see, like I'm getting a better payoff, but it's still just flicking off like Urban Decay, what happened to you guys? Ah! Maybe I should have gone in with like a darker matte and put this on top. Like I'm wondering if I do that with the other eye, if it will give me more of the effect I'm going for. But like this just seems so subtle. It's just not giving what I wanted. <sighs> All right, so for my other eye, I'm gonna be taking the color Take a Stand. I'm gonna try to shape that out to what I want and then I'm gonna pack the purple on top and see what we get. So one thing that I'm going to do is kind of like map out how I want this blown out wing to look. Editing Meg here doing a voiceover while I'm mapping this out. And I am like so not happy with this video, but this is my honest first impression. Um, I was frustrated with the palette, but I want to give it a second chance and create a second look. And also I apologize for like my energy in this video. Like I just... I feel like I can't mask the emotions on my face and I was just, I was so excited for this palette and then honestly I was let down with it. I just don't know what else to say, like having a second go around, having worked with the shadows, I thought maybe I would have an easier time and this was much more of a struggle. And I'm just disappointed and I'm just confused because I don't understand their marketing. It's like they weren't proud to put this palette out because I never heard about it. I don't know how my husband heard about it. He probably just went to the website and saw it was new, but it's just weird that like two months after launch, it's half off. But anyway, onwards with the review and working with this palette, like even this dark brown shadow was giving me trouble blending out. And it just seems like very weird to me because normally I don't struggle with Urban Decay eyeshadows. I just, I don't know what the deal is here. So I'm taking Case Close, which is the lightest matte in this palette, and I'm putting that on the inner part of the eye. I just wanted to do something really bold and in your face and different and not just use the neutrals like a lot of people would in the palette, even though most consumers use neutrals. I was just really excited to get into something creative. In my last video, I talk about my creative block coming undone. So I was just really looking forward to playing with the colors in here and it just not working out. <laughs> I'm just like... Oh my gosh, you could just see I'm bothered by it. So the purple is definitely an eyeshadow topper. 
So that is my bad because it's it's giving me what I want now that I'm packing it on top of the eyeshadow. So we're gonna wipe this eye off and start over. Okay, so again, carefully, because I know that there's fallout, try to get this sh shape out here. I will say that I do have valid frustration here with the fallout. Like, there's no reason for this shimmer to be so fallouty, especially when you need to be precise with a brush. So now that I did that dry, I'm gonna try a little bit of setting spray onto the brush and see how that works. I'm just trying to get this wing sharpened up. See, it looks kind of like muddy from the side though. I don't know how much the setting spray is helping. I've never really been a fan of taking shimmers with a setting spray in the first place. So I'm going to go in with a thicker angled brush and just pack it along that edge that I created carefully to try to minimize fall out so you can kind of see how this works as an eyeshadow topper and as a dual chrome because it's giving like that dark gray on when I'm looking straight on but where the light is reflecting you can really see that purple and then when I turn my head to the side you can really see the purple so that's kind of how the dual chromes work and now I'm going to go in with my finger with no further questions which is that gold color and work on packing this on the inner half honestly have you seen somebody try so hard to try to get eyeshadow to work and to try to get it like even the matte shades even the shimmers like I'm trying so many different ways to get this to work like this is just unacceptable and ridiculous like no one should have to try this hard to get eyeshadow to work for them and I feel like those two merge together pretty nicely. Um, and then I'm going to save Hulk out for once I get the rest of my shadow on. This is what we are looking like for the upper part of the eye. All right, so this is what we are looking like so far for the lower lash line. I'm going to take brains and brawn, and then I think I'm going to use the topper, my voice, on top of it. I love a good shimmer look, but I really feel like you need to have the mattes as a base here. And can we just say that this palette is very loosely packed? Um, that doesn't mean that the shadows are bad. It just means be careful. Uh, when you're applying your eyeshadow, like when you pick eyeshadow up, you definitely want to tap away the extra. But I am just going to actually, I'm going to put a little bit of a base down. I have been liking using this lip liner um, as a base for my lower lash line. This is from NYX. It's in the suede of matte lip liner in Moonwalk. And basically, I just kind of smudge this around and it gives the eyeshadow something to stick to without like getting creasing in my under eye from the primer. And it adds a little bit of a darker, moodier base and I've really been enjoying using it. So I just kind of do that about halfway and then I'm going to blend and add the shadow on top. I feel like this shadow is like, because it is a little bit loosely packed, I've been getting some of it in my eyes. So just be careful applying. So as you can see, this is a little bit darker than what we have going on top, but putting that eyeshadow topper and that glitter on top of it is going to light it up and give it, lighten it up and give it a little bit more of a dimension. All right, so now I'm going in with my voice and again, I'm being very careful and I'm just going to start tapping that into place because if you start swiping, you're going to be getting glitter all over your face and that's kind of how it goes with most shimmers. And then once most of the product is distributed, I can kind of start to really get in there. This did not lighten up the under eye as I hoped, but that is okay. Maybe I just could have used this instead of. Hmm. 
Maybe I just could have used this instead of putting the brown shadow and just use the lip liner as the base to stick it on, but that's fine. We will adjust. And then lastly, for the very inner corner, I'm going to take Gamma Glow for the lower lash line and put that there and blend it into the dark shadow. So this is what we have so far. I don't even know if I like the, the look of that. I feel like it's, hmm. All right, so I'm gonna finish up my base and we're gonna dig into that Hulk eyeshadow because it is begging to be used and hope that I don't ruin my makeup by it falling out everywhere. So I'm just really going to pack this into the inner corner and just like blend it up into like that gold color. But again, I'm really having to pack it on to get that payoff. So this is the up close finished look. Let's zoom out a little bit though. Okay, so here is the finished look with the Hulk palette and it's just like, it's okay. Like the green inner corner, like the Hulk out shade, pulled it together, but again, I'm gonna have to express my disappointment with it being a Hulk palette and it being so tame. Like, the packaging is nice and bold. Like, why isn't that reflected into the palette? Um, and then even the colors in here that look like they were bold ended up being quite disappointing in my opinion. Like, I really had to pack on a darker eyeshadow for the purple to show up or I just want to be able to put it a shimmer on my finger and have it go on. I get it's an eyeshadow topper, but I just feel like this was almost a wasted opportunity with what it could have been. And shifting back to our first look to wrap this whole thing up. <laughs> Here is the up close of it. Because I did use all shimmers and the dual chromes, it's definitely giving like an oil slick type appearance, which I don't mind. Um, I just, I'm a little disappointed with the pigmentation of the shadows, but this is what we came up with and what the purple sparkles looks like on the lower lash line with the purple liner as a base. Okay, so now that we are zoomed out, I don't think that the look is terrible. It's just not what I had in mind, especially when it comes to a Hulk palette. Like this does not scream Hulk to me. Um, I did use one, two, three, four, five. I used five of the shimmers in this palette to create this look. So um, you can also see inserts of the clips that I did doing a more neutral look. But to be honest, my overall thoughts on this palette is we already have so many neutral palettes available to us that have these exact eyeshadows in them when it comes to the browns and when it comes to the neutrals. So when it comes to a specialized palette like the Hulk palette, the She-Hulk palette, I'd rather it be packed full of like all unique impactful colors, not uh, timid shimmers and browns that I already have in every other palette that I own. So for $45, um, I just have to say for me personally, it's not really worth it. Um, and I know that there are people that have a lot of neutral eyeshadows. So it's just like, are they going to be buying this palette for little pops of shimmer? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, if you're someone that doesn't wear bright, colorful makeup, is this a kind of like, is this your ideal palette? I would love to hear from you in the comments because I'm genuinely curious what people think that don't like bright colorful makeup when it comes to a palette like this if they already own neutral eyeshadows and some shimmers. So I just thought it was a big disappointment as much as I love the brand, as much as I love Urban Decay. I just really wish, like I said earlier in the video and kind of ranted about, I just really wish that they would go back to their roots of like bright pops of color like even the eyeliner that I used was so vivid and bold and I just miss the boldness in the brand as a whole when it comes to eye stuff so I hope in the future they can get back to that because I think it would bring a lot of excitement to the brand but those are my thoughts on this palette 
Um, so let me know down below. I don't know if I would ever reach for this palette ever again outside of doing a YouTube video. To be honest, that's my verdict on this palette. So let me know what your thoughts and impressions of it were down below. As always, thank you so much for your time and energy in this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.